She is Dame Dubolsky. If I got that right, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, what that meant is we are coming to Poland. Wrocław. To Wrocław. To be exact. We are in the Poland series, a couple of days away before heading to Wrocław. I think if you're watching this video, we are probably already in Wrocław. Probably. Because this video will only be released probably like next week. Probably. So this time next week, we will be in Poland. Oh yeah. And if you want to follow our journey, then uh, have a look at our Instagram and Facebook pages because we'll be posting a lot of our stuff on those channels as well. Yes. This video is a bit more about Wrocław and why it's one of the best travel destinations in Poland. And the reason why we chose Wrocław in specific is we had heard a lot about the city and we had heard a lot about it being one of the best cities to visit in Poland, most well-preserved cities and that it's just a beautiful place, affordable and very, very underrated in like the European community. That's why we chose Wrocław. And there's a lot of good food, apparently. A lot of good food, but we are still busy trying to put our itinerary together. And that is why we thought, let's have a look and see what is in Wrocław and one of the best things to do. Yeah. So do it. Let's get into the video. Welcome to Wrocław. I'm Eva Zubek and I'm so excited to be here with you today because Wrocław is my hometown and I believe one of the most underrated cities in all of Poland. As you can probably see, she even said it, the most underrated, one of the most underrated cities in Poland. Mm -hmm. Obviously behind me, we've got the Christmas market happening here right now and I promise we will come back here later on in the episode. But first, I want to show you what you can get up to in Wrocław year round, anytime you come here. I'm so excited. Yes, this is because your travel. obviously we're not going to be there for Christmas. We're not going in Christmas time, which is sad because we're not seeing the Christmas market, but we are going in spring. So the weather's going to be better, more sun. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's still going to be equally as good. Oh, yeah. In Wrocław. I think we've nailed the word Wrocław. Wrocław. It's actually quite pretty. And so is the city. Apparently, the old town is one of the most beautiful in Poland. Before we begin our tour of Wrocław, I'd like to introduce yes. you to the city's honorary residents. These are known sweet. Everyone in the comments told us about to look out for those little things. You go gnome hunting. There are thousands of these things. I'm, I would love to count how many we can see take in a, our trip. Take a selfie at every gnome you see. Yes, so we're going to do that. Our, our camera <laughs> might not be big enough. We will buy a new one. <laughs> so we call them Krasnale. And legend has it that they arrived in the city to play tricks on the local population. The real story of Wrocław's famous gnomes is a story of political resistance. Back in the Soviet era, an anti-communist movement known as the Orange Alternative... I actually expected them to be a little bit more bigger. Like, they're no, actually pretty small. They're tiny. ...started painting images of dwarves on the city's walls. The dwarves symbolized a peaceful protest, but because the nature of the visuals was so absurd and ridiculous, the government didn't dare arrest any of the movement's members, lest they become a laughingstock. Though the communist times are long gone, the gnomes remain, and have in fact truly cemented their presence on the city streets. <laughs> it's actually so sad because if you were in South Africa, like you would not be able to do something like this because people would steal those gnomes for the metal so that they can melt it down. Yeah. Maybe they're like, like solidified to the ground. You can't pick them up. You probably can't pick them up, but I mean, there are so many things that are in South Africa that are like literally like welded or cemented or concreted into the ground and they steal it. Yeah. But this doesn't happen in Poland because they have existed for many years. Yeah, it's sad. There are so many gnomes all across Wrocław and they all have their own personalities and jobs. You can always find one that you relate to. This here is my spirit animal. This guy is called Artik the Traveler and he is a renowned world traveler. That's pretty cool. They even got their own names and what they like mean. 
think like per is the owner of personalities. That's cute. But apparently, he's been to the desert, he's been to the Arctic, and he's just about <laughs> to set off on his next journey. So I feel like we could be friends in another life if only he weren't a tiny little bronze sculpture. Anyway, safe travels, Archik. See you on the other side of the world. <laughs> But gnomes aren't the only residents of Wrocław, the capital of Lower Silesia. This is the third largest Silesia. It's the capital of Lower Silesia. Silesia was what we saw in one of our previous food review videos, mm. where some of the best foods comes from the region of Silesia. Mm, yes. I didn't know that Wrocław was in the Silesia region and that it was the capital. Amazing. So that means being for some good food. Oh yeah, I'm so excited city in Poland and a busy university town. Within Poland, Wrocław is known for hosting various cultural festivals and events, and it's home to several UNESCO World Heritage Sites. If you don't have a drone, but you want to see a beautiful panoramic view of the old town square, I know just the place. Make a note of that. St. Mary's Magdalene Church. The, the churches always have the best viewpoints. We really do love to see like the city from, from like high up. We always go to the highest place that we can to go look at the city and the view. So you just get a different perspective There's of this. like the city and its beauty you know, from from higher up. Yeah. So we're gonna definitely jot that one down. Now imagine being here on this bridge back in the 15th century when it was originally oh. built. Wow, that's a pretty amazing view. You've already met some. And of course, <laughs> there has to be a no. Oh. Some of Wrocław's famous gnomes. These girls here are witches, and they are here because of a legend that surrounds this bridge. According to one of the legends, the souls of lazy, vain maidens wander this bridge, sweeping it for all eternity as a punishment for their lazy ways. Standing on the Bridge of Penitence, you'll probably be able to appreciate Wrocław's strategic location in the region. And thanks to its location, the city has a very long and complex history. The first recorded settlements here date back to the 6th century. Wow. Since then, Wrocław was part of... It's like 600 AD. Yeah, that's crazy. More than 1,400 years ago. ...of many empires, changing hands with the tides of history. This city has been ruled by the Kingdom of Poland, the Kingdom of Hungary, the Kingdom of Bohemia, the Habsburg Empire, the Kingdom of Prussia, and Germany. And then it was returned to Poland after World War II. Fun fact, that's when my family moved to the region from Lviv. So much history, so much depth, yeah. like so many different powers that ruled that part of the country. Um, imagine, imagine what it's all it's been through, it's people. It's just amazing and it's a testament of time. I feel like that's why it's so... Majestic. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really majestic and cultural, history rich. Diverse. So one of my favorite things about being in Poland is all the fresh produce that you can get here. And this market hall called Hala Targowa is one of the last remaining market halls in Poland. We used to get all of our produce from places like this once upon a time. But, you know, out here, you can still get a taste for that old Poland with a bit of a hipster, <laughs> gentrified touch. This market hall is a true melting pot. On the one hand, this is where you can come for homemade bread, local... Bread. Mm. It's like... You have to kiss it if you have to drop it. If you drop it. If you drop it, it, you kiss it. As a sign of respect. Sign of bread. respect because bread is important. Yes. Part of the culture. Fully grown veggies and mushrooms straight from the forest. Check these out. Mushroom foraging was also something that was in one of the videos. They are very big on mushrooms in Poland and foraging for your own mushrooms. Yep. 
I, on the other hand, wouldn't do it without a pole with me because I feel like my luck, I would go pick the most poisonous one and eat it. Yeah, but obviously you don't do it unless you know what you're doing. Exactly, that's why I won't do it. But you can do it obviously at a market because it's good to eat. Okay, but I'm, I'm talking about foraging. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to Wrocław to, to forage. But, but I, would like there... to, I would like to go forage sometime. Maybe with a guide. Maybe there's someone that's in our oh, like, audience that is uh, a professional. If you want to take us mushroom foraging, please let us know down below. <laughs> Now, <laughs> these are little cows. Don't worry, they have nothing to do with actual cows. That's just what we call them in Polish. Kufki are the traditional Polish fudge candy. Oh, and fudge candy. I absolutely love fudge. That is, I would never have picked that up and thought, I'm going to have fudge now. That looks like a little piece of cheese, you know, like one of those. Yeah, exactly, it looks got a cow on it. I mean, you never <laughs> say it's a piece of fudge. I remember having these as a kid, and honestly, I kind of miss them. So there's all kinds of flavors here, but I think I'm going to go for the original milk fudge. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. So fudgy. Mm. So fudgy. Oh my god, this tastes just like my childhood. <laughs> But there's so much more here. Teas from around the world, endless spices, and cheeses and meats from all across Europe. Even if you could probably spend the whole day just in that market alone. If you don't end up buying anything, the Wrocław Market Hall has such a cool atmosphere, it's worth even the quickest of visits. As for me, it's time to have lunch at a restaurant that aims to recreate Wrocław's old school traditional yes. dishes. Yes, yes, yes. Traditional that Wrocław. Is that, that is, is what we want. That is what we want. That is the, the cuisine you want. The traditional Polish Wrocław yes. cuisine. That is where we will be eating. This is Julia. She is a local guide specializing in food tours. And today she mm. will share with us some of her knowledge about Wrocław's distinctive cuisine. We should try and meet Julia. We the should get a food like guide. Someone that can maybe tell us where to go and what to eat. Yes. If we can find it, I think that'll be a very cool idea. After the war, people from all around Poland came here to live here because before the war it used to be a German uh, city. So when the Germans left and moved to Germany, uh, somebody had to come here. So people, for, for example, from East Poland was coming here and they brought their culture, their recipes. So we have a lot of different influences from East of Poland, from Germany. So this is the, the nice, interesting mix uh, mixture. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's also a big thing in South Africa, like South African culture. We have so many different traditions that brought like their food together. But that's what makes the cuisine is yeah. so many influences from other people and other cultures that it develops something completely new. Yeah. And that's what Polish was. If you're under so many different types of rules, so many different influences, of course, you are going to develop your own taste, your own, like the language, for example, is a very good example. And someone was explaining it, like there's a lot of influences in the language from various other languages around the world, that, which ultimately led to Polish. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's every different aspect all influences food, language, the people, the culture. History and traditions combine and create spectacular things. Correct. It's a unique combination, yeah. a permutation. Yeah. Okay, very cool. And what do we have here? Here we have um, a pre-war uh, Wroclawian recipe. This is uh, herring tartar, sour in taste because of uh, citrus juice it was marinated in. Looks beautiful. And, uh, it is served with uh, egg, with the bacon, pickles, onion, uh, Looks sour like a breakfast red cabbage. Dish. So this is something typically from here. And for veggies, we've got... Yes, uh, this is um, smoked cheese uh, huh? with um, cranberry. Oh, uh, double, double. Deliciousness. Double wow, that's like some days like <laughs> ultimate cheese and bread. And cranberries. Oh my goodness. Something that uh, 
something that um, someone was saying in one of the comments, which actually makes a lot of sense, is that a lot of their dishes are starch based because, like, after the war, there wasn't a lot of like meat readily available. And meat was also very expensive, so they developed a lot more uh, starchier dishes with because carbohydrates, the bread and the cabbage, that was a, a lot less expensive. So mm -hmm. that's where those dishes came from less meat. But you, it's actually, that is actually something that is prevalent throughout various countries because of their history. I mean, if you think about the poorer class South Africans, it's the same thing. They rely on starch and, uh, or so used to relying on starch mm. and all of that because of the history. It's got a, it's a direct relationship between like poverty yeah. uh, and rich. Obviously, rich people or people that are a lot more wealthier from back in the day all the way to now can afford better food. Uh, I think that is... More meatier food. Yeah, and, but I think that is like the case in South Africa. However, I think in Poland, um, as you said, someone mentioned that post-war it was starchy, it's energy, but I think they have tweaked it and like made it actually made it part of their cuisine. So now you can get the meat and the starch together. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds, yes. Uh, Jam, mm -hmm. it's not typically associated with Wrocław. We connect this dish with the mountain part of Poland. Mm -hmm. The starters quickly ended up in our bellies and next it was time for soup. So now we will, we will try barszcz. Uh, barszcz is made from uh, fermented beets. That is your favorite that we've seen in other videos. Yeah. Fermented beetroot I'm, soup. I'm going to have beetroot soup. Mark my words. It is traditionally served during Christmas Eve. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. this is perfect. It's spicy and sour. And, and sweet. It, yes, it's just everything, all the things. So what do we have here? I mean, this I know. These are pierogi. Uh, yeah. Right? Our favorite pierogi. It's traditional food, most beloved food. And really, if you know anything about Polish cuisine, you'll probably know pierogi, right? Yes, pierogi, Polish dumplings. If you know any Polish people, ask them, where can I get the best pierogi in the world? And I know, I guarantee, I know exactly what they'll tell you. At my grandma's. Is that is so true. Everyone has said that in the comments. Everyone said that you won't in the get, You won't get good pierogi at restaurants. You will only get it at my Oma's house. My great grandma's house. house. Or my mom makes the best pierogi. The best pierogi. So. Household food is the best though. If anyone wants to invite us over, we'd love to taste your grandma's pierogi. I, don't, I think that's like intruding. No, but apparently Polish people are very welcoming and open and... I'm just putting it out there. I'd love to taste your granny's pierogi. <laughs> this looks a little bit more elaborate. I've never come across this dish. Yes, this is uh, this dish is called Śląskie Niebo, Silesian Heaven. This is pork meat with the bacon, served with sauce made from boiled like dry pineapple. fruits, like dry plums, apricots, apples. And uh, this is served with uh, Wroclawian dumplings. These are plain dumplings made with uh, potatoes and uh, small pieces of toasted bread. So, you know, in Poland we have this stereotype that... Uh... Is that what I think it is? Vodka. Maybe. It looks like vodka. Oh, no. Or schnapps. I don't know. There's a lot of vodka out here. Oh! And, uh, a lot vodka. of us like to... <laughs> what do you expect? It's in Poland. old times, vodka was served that, that to looks... spirits of the ancestors during it all... Looks like... It's a little bit bigger than a shot. Like that looks like uh, mouthful. It looks like a headache, a hangover. We should probably also then have some vodka. We have to. We have to. Someone was actually saying like the there's some distilleries that you can go to where you can taste some real, genuine good vodka, and you can actually see the process of how it's made and it. Fabulous. Saints days. So yes, we have a lot, a lot of traditions con uh, with vodka. So oh wow, yes. so it's not just a drink; it's a part of our culture. Yes, we hit our glass. Vodka is in Polish blood. It's part of their blood. It was invented there. Their blood is probably fifty percent vodka, fifty percent blood. No. <laughs>
What do you guys think? Do you just down that whole thing or do you sip it? I'm down it. I down it. Who sips vodka? <laughs> Not fair. Like I said, we only know South African style vodka, Russian bear vodka. But vodka is vodka. No, I think Polish vodka is different. I think vodka is vodka. I think it's going to taste different. I think it's going to be more delicious. And I think we're going to sip it slowly and just savor the taste. I look forward to seeing that on your face when you taste it. <laughs> I still have a lot to shoot today. <laughs> Woo, delicious, right? Wow. Is she that her is face? powerful. <laughs> there was no expression on her face. The but the other lady was, was disgusted. She was Polish because she knew. But the other lady is also Polish. So it just depends on your taste buds. Okay. The thing is taste buds and how you were brought up, probably. Yes. My belly very full and happy. I got a chance to quiz the restaurant owner about his favorite spots to visit in Wrocław. A z takich ulubionych miejsc pana w Wrocławiu? Na pewno, jeżeli już to Ostrów Tumski, to jest moje takie ulubione miejsce. I oczywiście rynek wrocławski, który żyje, żyje całą noc, więc można się zabawić, można w atmosferze. Super, no to właśnie idziemy na Ostrów Tumski, więc odwiedzimy pana ulubione miejsce. Dziękuję pięknie. Dzięki wielkie. Well, here it is. Ostrów Tumski. This is the oldest part of Wrocław and it was already inhabited in the 10th century, over a thousand years ago. Back in the medieval times, this former island belonged oh, to the church and according to the church's law, all visitors, including royalty, had to remove their head coverings before entering Ostrów Tumski. This tradition is no more, but there is one other that's still very much alive. Here yeah, has probably one of the most enigmatic jobs still around in the world. Um, his job oh. is to light up these. Wow. Now in Germany, I've seen this uh, with some of the very old school lamps. They light it, but a lot of the newer technology, it's actually, um, it's done by automatic, like, like a lighter at certain times. Yeah, but it's so easy to like replace the entire lamp and just make it an electric one. But that is like keeping the tradition. And I, I think that is so, so cool. I'd love to see it. Imagine like that's your job. Like that's what you do. Like you're lighting up the city. You, you light up the city every single night. That's amazing. These ancient old school gas lamps every single night here in the center of Wrocław. Wrocław's lamp lighter makes the rounds of Ostrów Tumski every sundown to turn on the manual gas lamps and once again at sunrise to turn them back off. There are only three cities in Europe that That's hold on very to cool. this lamplighter tradition, and Wrocław is one of them. Can you imagine There's having this kind of job? Three cities in Europe that hold that tradition. And we go into one of them. Oh my word. Can't wait. Where every time you go to work, there's a crowd of people following you and filming you and taking photos of you. It goes to show just how special a role the lamplighter plays in the city's tradition. It's probably like a very popular person in the city. He lights up. The city. He's in everyone's photos, he's being followed. I wonder if it's one person that does it, like all the time, every single day, or they, they no. do like shift changes. I think that there are multiple people like them that do it across the city. Wow, look at that. Wow. I think we missed out by not going in Christmas okay, you time. Guys, we are finally back at the Christmas market here in Wrocław's old town. And, and look how nice it is that there's not like a lot of people there. Like the Christmas markets that we've been to in Germany, I think the whole world flocks to them and there's just like thousands of people. The most crowded Christmas market we've ever been to was? Often. I, we couldn't move. Yeah. It just felt like I was squished up like sardines. And it was actually not nice. But look at lacquer that one looks. That's a bit of South African there. Lacquer means nice. Nice. But it actually means a lot of words. Yeah, it does. But the thing is, we were in South Africa during Christmas with our family and sunshine. It's summertime there, that time of the year. So I don't regret it. Got vitamin D in. Yes. And if you're into crafts and arts and local food, this is basically 
Disneyland. Let's go. I always find like the Christmas market so majestic. Like coming from a country like South Africa where we don't experience that type of Christmas where it's cold, Christmassy, drinking glue vine, going to a market like that, like being this side of the world where that is like celebrated like that. It's such a unique take and so different. Yeah. And it's a pretty amazing. It's like stuff that happens in like movies you know i always find that is exactly what it felt like uh, when we were here we were here for like half of december so we still you know visited some christmas markets but it was literally it felt like we've seen this on movies and we've never experienced it so it was really an eye-opening thing and it, i i know how magical that is i would love to actually you know experience the polish christmas market Christmas market in Wrocław is the perfect place to try delicious local food and drink, stock up on Christmas decorations and gifts, or simply soak up the festive atmosphere. I love Christmas markets because they really make me feel like a child again. That's so exciting! Like a child. <laughs> There's one last place I really want to show you, and this is a place that not everybody knows about. In order to get there, you have to go through this dark and creepy gate, but I promise it's worth it in the end. Let's go. Not really dark and creepy. This here is Neon Side Gallery, a quirky collection of authentic Neon. vintage neons gathered here by a private enthusiast. Look, I may be biased because Wrocław is my hometown, but I really do believe that this city is one of Poland's hidden gems. It may not have the glitz and glamour of Warsaw or the fame of Kraków, but truly, even in some of its darkest, creepiest corners, you can find beautiful places like this. So if you get a chance to visit, come and have a look for yourself. And if you've ever been to Wrocław, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. All right. I guess I'll see you in the next episode. Really, really cool. I'm very excited. I think our, my biggest like uh, true grit, I don't look like the true grit, but uh, the biggest thing I think that would have been cool is to visit in Christmas time. I think it's probably even more magical than it is. Mm -hmm. A lot of people refer to uh, Bratzelf is as a very beautiful, majestical place. And you can only imagine how it must feel during the Christmas time as well when it brings out that magic and that Christmassy feeling, you know? Absolutely. No, I mean, I'm very excited for our trip. I think we got some good tips out of this video. And, and there's still a few more videos that we are going to review before attending or visiting Wrocław. And uh, I don't know how many there will be still, but we are super excited for the trip. Um, if you've got any recommendations over and above what's already been mentioned here or in our previous videos, please let us know. We are looking for those hidden gems so that we can experience it for ourselves. We are super excited. Like, I think we've said that now 50 times, but it's the truth. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our latest videos. Until next time. This is Beyond Borders. Over and out.